Hi everybody and welcome back to the workshop of me, Chris Fisher, RPT, the Blind Wood Turner. And uh, yeah, it's really cool to be back in the workshop after quite a few weeks off actually. So Matthew's back here now after his Christmas break. Say hi Matthew. Hello. Uh, so yeah, we're back at it. Uh, so, got a really fun and exciting project for you today. It's not a full turning project, it's more of a technique tutorial. And it's something that I've known about and I have used for many many years uh, being a, uh, a lover of sort of like Halloween and home haunts uh, and if any of you have seen some of my recent Instagram posts of my old rusty bowls and things like that uh, I'm going to show you today the technique that I've used so I've got a piece of sycamore here and I'm going to do a very very simple shape it's not about the shape it's about the finish and the texture today so uh, what I'm going to do is just mark the position with this on my wooden disc and then uh, we'll do a very simple shape and then it's all about the texture. So uh, I'll see you in a minute. Okay folks, so we've jumped forward a bit in time. This is a sycamore uh, pot shape uh, and I've given it a very very quick, literally a one minute sanding with some 100. Uh, this, this technique uh, is really going to cover up all sorts of things. Uh, it's a very thick heavy technique and uh, your sanding really technically doesn't need to be done once you're happy with the form but I, I would just give it a quick kiss with something so what have we got here well to the home haunters out there you will know this stuff as monster mud uh, but to the DIYers and the plasterers out there it is ready mixed jointing compound that plasterers used to uh, when the the drywall or plasterboard has been butted up together they'll put the tape on and then they will uh, go over it with jointing compound and it sets uh, amazingly well and this is quick setting so let's pull the lid off and then if I can just tilt it a bit to the camera so there it is it's a very gloopy consistency uh, and I've took my smock off because if you get this stuff it sticks like the proverbial you know what to a blanket if you get it on your clothes your clothes will be ruined so I don't really want to ruin that smock so you can employ lots and lots of different techniques uh, and uh, do lots and lots of amazing things with it but I'm just going to show you sort of like the basics today so you get a good and it really is thick and gloopy and then you can just dab it on. I'm not going to go inside the the, uh, the mortise because later on, when we've rever uh, reversed it, uh, don't want any uncured monster mud on my chuck jaws. So uh, I will do that later on by hand. So you just keep daubing it on. And if you're after a really, really gnarly rusty effect, uh, even though the rust effect paints are really good, this will take it to another level. Although I do believe that uh, it's probably Chroma Craft, because uh, I was listening to a Nick Agar video. Uh, Chroma Craft have got some great rust effects out uh, that he sort of like applied in a couple of stages. But this is another great way to get a great effect. So I'm just using a stippling action. 
section all over. Okay folks, so I've got that first stippled layer on, so I'm not going to dry this completely, it does dry pretty quick, I'm just going to semi set it, so just got the hair dryer on there. Okay, so I've got some gloves on now, uh, and I'm going to actually pick up some of this monster mud, this joint and compound, and put it on here, I'm going for a really really chunky uh, texture, that one, just get that as close as I can. So, I'm going to Okay, so I've got my uh, really gnarly texture on there now. So I've got to my heat gun. Two reasons. These are thick, thicker particles, well thicker clumps now. So they're going to need some more heat. And also this is lower speed. I wouldn't want the high speed of a hairdryer to uh, blow this texture out. So, and of course always be careful using a heat gun so I'm just lined up there now and this will shrink a bit and contract okay folks so that's set up now reasonably well uh, it's certainly dry enough for us to get some paint on so I've just got my rattle can here and I've made sure that the nozzles point in the right way so I'm just going to lay down some uh, black here nice and slow rotate it Okay folks, so that black base uh, has dried pretty much uh, 90%. Uh, there's none coming off on my fingertips now. So what uh, Matthew has told me that this is the darker rust, so this is the first one. So what we're going to do now is I'll just dip that in there and then using the stippling technique I'm going to apply it all over this pot. Okay folks, so it's got both the shades of brown, well brown and I think it's an, an orangey, orangey brown. So now I'm going to apply, uh, it's all like a verdigris effect. So I am going to do this instead of stippling, dry brushing. Okay, so dry brushing now this verdigris colour on. Just get rid of, so this is a very thin and wispy. You just have to be patient, you know, the way you do with everything. If you inadvertently dry brush and knock some of the points off, uh, you can just touch them up later. Uh, might be a bit trickier for me to do that. Uh, and I'd have to probably ask Matthew to locate them. 
but we'll see how we get on. So we've flipped it around now and got it in the chuck. I don't know uh, how it's going to hold up with the vibration, the finish, but let's give it a go. We'll start hollowing out. Okay folks, so here it is, the big reveal. It's my heavily textured pot on the outside. Inside, uh, it's been left au naturel. And we were wondering whether or not to do the same texture on the inside as the outside. So we weren't sure, so we flipped a coin. Well, we asked my phone to flip a coin. Uh, and it selected au naturel. So it's... Uh, it's got wormholes in, but they've been stabilised uh, and it's obviously part of the character. A piece of sycamore, so you've got the outside of the bowl there, pot rather. Uh, so, yes, uh, proof of concept, yes, uh, a couple of these little nodules did fly off when I was hollowing out, so that was due in part to the vibration uh, and maybe them not being quite uh, as cured or as set. As most of the other so I just blobbed them in and refinished it uh, and did the foot at the last so what I would probably do is turn the shape on the outside flip it around do the hollowing out to completion and polishing and then I could turn it upside down put it on a board and just do this by hand which is probably a safer way but there it is uh, it feels so gnarly it's unbelievable uh, it's really really great so I'll have a go with some uh, monster mud uh, or ready mixed jointing compound if you want to uh, so thank you so very much uh, don't forget to like share comment and subscribe hit the thumbs up button please 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 do and don't forget to hit the bell uh, so you'll be notified of when we've got a new video coming out so thank you so very much give it a go practice experiment have lots and lots of fun and keep on turning so until the next time everyone Thanks a lot. Bye.